Hey, how you doing? This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. We're going to try to check out this antenna switch that I got at a ham fest this weekend. Paid a dollar for this. Um, you can find them on Amazon for about $15, $17. Other places, they're even more expensive than that. It says it will handle 1,000 watts. I'm going to only be using it for antennas and receivers, not transmitters. So we're going to see if we can find out that if this is a uh, a good switch. Again, it's used. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check continuity, and we get this on the cut. There we go. And first we'll see if all the grounds are good. That's zero. That's zero, that's zero, and to the chassis is zero. So continuity is good. Now, it's in the off position. This, uh, this knob is going to have to be replaced because it slips the knob itself, not the switch. So let's check between the center conductor on this end and it's in the off position, so there should not be any connections to any of these outputs. Check this one. Open. This one. Open. This one. Open. So they're all open. Now we'll go to the first position, which is 1. And I assume it's this one up here. So we should have continuity now. Which we do. And we check the other ones. That's open. That's open. So that one looks good. We'll go to two. We'll go back to one. It should be open. It's open. Two. Continuity. Three. Open. And lastly, we'll do number three. So we'll go back and check one. Open. Two. Open. Three. Continuity. Now, isn't this exciting? So I want to check this thing out before I put it into service. Now, let's see how difficult it is to open this thing up and see if there's any places where uh, it's the, the contacts have been burnt. So I think you just have to take a couple of screws off to get this cover here off. So let me see if I can do that. The right screwdriver. This might these screwdrivers might be too small. May not be able to get enough torque on. Ooh, that comes off easy. Like maybe it's been in. <laughs> somebody's already been inside. There's that screw. There's that one. Quite. It is exciting. <laughs> okay, now let's see if the cover comes off. It does, so it's easy to get into. Now we'll look at the connections. And I don't see anything burnt. The switch, I don't see any burnt spots. It looks like a pretty good switch. Uh, the soldering is all clean, good contact. Everything looks good. This looks like a pretty good switch. Again, I'm only planning on using this uh, for receive. And like I say, this little handle here is it's working now. When I first tried it, it was pushed in, so the the uh, threads or whatever you want to call it on the switch were not, not making. Uh, the grooves were not making contact with the grooves on the switch itself. So I thought the switch was broken. And I took it off, put it back on, and didn't push it down too far and we were working fine. I, I'm not even sure, I mean this thing looks like brand new. I'm not even sure it was used that much. I definitely you know, it says it's good for a thousand watts. I definitely wouldn't put a thousand watts through that switch right there. 
Come on, camera, focus. But for receive, I think it's good. I'm my meter measured zero ohms, so I, th I think there's a good switch. So that's that one. I paid a buck for that one, which gives me, you know, I'm going to. I'm trying to think of any other test I can do on a switch other than hooking up some antennas to it and just clipping through the antennas. But of course, the antennas themselves would vary from antenna to antenna, so that's not a good test. I don't know of any other tests I can do. If you think of any other tests I can do, um, again, I'm only planning on using this for receive. But at this point, you know, these are a nice looking connectors. Um, I don't see prompt, uh, so I would think this is worth the fifteen to seventeen dollars on Amazon because I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put this in my Amazon store. So that's it. that one. Now this one, um, this like I can say is this is made by Pace, which back in the day when CB radio was really popular, um, they made CB radios. They may still make them. They had a lot of them very popular ones, and they made accessories such as switches. So this is basically the same concept, this big wheel, and this this clicks into place real nice. Now one thing about this one is it has no mounting points. This one down here on this little part here are mounting holes. There are four mounting holes. You can mount this to something. This one, there's nothing. Um, whoops. This one is considerably heavier than the other one. I probably due to the box here. The box here feels heavier. And it's bigger. So let's see if we can get this one open. Oh, let's do our continuity check first. It may save us some time. Uh, get the meter down here where you can see it. So... This has only connections to the three connectors. It doesn't have, let me see, one, two, three. No, it only has three positions. So there's no off position. So this should be at one. So first we'll check the grounds. That's good. That's good. And that's good. So the grounds are all good. Check the chassis. That's good. So all the grounds are good. Now we'll check continuity between, should be on number one now. Whoops. And that's good. Number two, it should be open. It's open. Open. OL means overload or infinite resistance in this case. So we'll go to two. We'll check one. That should be OL. Yes, two, zero, three, OL. And we'll go to three, one, OL, two, OL, and three, zero. So, looks like it's all working. So let's see how much trouble it is to get into. It should be four screws. Mm. That's a little hard to turn. Yep, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to have to get a much, much bigger screwdriver. So, <laughs> they may have used um, something to, uh, like Loctite or something, to lock the screws in place. So, I have to get a heavier screwdriver to get this one open. And I'll do that later. But I'm guessing um, that it's okay inside. Let me see if I can find a bigger screwdriver real quick. Real quick here. Here's one right here. Here's one close by. It's not the best screwdriver in the world, but it's close. And it works. Like I say, this one feels much heavier than the other one. 
but the case alone is a higher, heavier, heavier duty than the other case. Now another test is um, isolation between each of the inputs or outputs. And but resistance wise, they measured infinite. And let's see now. How does this open? Oh, I might take the screwdriver right open. There we go, it's coming. Okay, we got it open. So there it is. Um Hmm. I don't particularly like that switch. Now what you call super heavy duty. Of course, I'm going to use it for receive only, so maybe that's good. Um, it's a little discoloration. And let me get a pin here to point with. And I don't know if it will show up, but right, right here. Come on, focus. I guess I can't focus that close. Right there, I don't think you can see it. It's a little bit of rust. Um, <laughs> the wires are bare. I don't know. I'm not as impressed with the construction of this. The parts look fine. Nice heavy case. I'm not, not too happy about that switch. But it should be fine for receive. Okay, that's it. So, I, like I say, I don't know if they make these anymore. Um, but this one's not a bad, bad switch for receive. You can either have three radios connected to one antenna or three antennas connected to one radio. Not a bad switch. I'm going to put this one in my store. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.